honor to our pastor on today, to our assistant pastor, Pastor Scott, to our deacons, our trustees, uh, this beautiful, beautiful male choir, to our IT team, to First Lady Grove, to my wife, Maria Anderson, and to all of you that are watching. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Uh, there is a word from the Lord on today. Uh, and if you have your Bibles, would you go with me to the book of Lamentations? The book of Lamentations, chapter 3. Lamentations, chapter 3. And if you can, please stand for the reading of God's word. The book of Lamentations, chapter 3. We'll begin at verse 19 and we will conclude with verse 26. I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Verse 19 reads, Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, mm -hmm. my soul hath been still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Mm -hmm. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. Mm -hmm. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, you may be seated. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Uh, speak, Lord. To your people. Uh, Lord, in times like these, we need to hear words from you. Uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God say amen. amen. Uh, I would like to borrow uh, the title from our former president, Barack Obama's book. Uh, and use for a thought today the audacity of hope. Yeah. Uh, the audacity of hope. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I, I believe that, that I can say without fear of successful contradiction mm -hmm. that there is trouble in our land. Oh, yeah. The current pandemic scientifically known as COVID-19 or the coronavirus, mm -hmm. has enveloped us into a state of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. With uncertainty comes fear. Mm -hmm. Fear has the uncanny ability to send our minds racing in a thousand different directions, mm -hmm. uh, flooding our thoughts with a lot of what ifs. I don't know about you, but, but I had a few. Right. Uh, what if it hits my family? Right. Uh, what if this uh, don't uh, end? Uh, what if uh, they don't reopen our children's school? What, what if they permanently close down my place of work? Uh, what if I lose two or three weeks of pay? Uh, what if this? And, and what if that? Uh, thinking about all of that, mm -hmm. I would submit to you that what we need to do more than ever mm -hmm. uh, is to lean uh -huh. and depend on the one and only begotten Son, yeah. uh, the only one that can bring us hope oh. in any situation. Yeah. Uh, I can remember it uh, back in 2004 uh, at the Democratic National Convention. Uh, the then president-elect Barack Obama, in his speech, he used these words to describe hope. 
Uh, he said, I'm not talking about blind optimism. I'm talking about something more substantial. Uh, it's the hope of slaves sitting around a fire singing freedom songs. Uh, the hope of immigrants setting out for distant shore. Uh, the hope of a young naval lieutenant bravely patrolling the Mekong Delta. Uh, the hope of a mill worker's son who dares to defy the odds. Uh, the hope of a skinny kid with a funny name who believes that America has a place for him too. Hope in the face of difficulty. Hope in the face of uncertainty. He said the audacity of hope. But today, how do you define hope? Uh, maybe for you, hope is the belief that you will somehow be able to pay your bills even though the company you work for has cut your hours because of the pandemic. Uh, maybe hope for you is the belief that your child will, will somehow return to the way that they were raised and turn their life around. Uh, however you choose to describe your hope, uh, I believe we can agree on one thing. Uh, I believe that we can agree that hope is audacious. Uh, hope is brave. Hope is courageous. And hope is bold. Amen, somebody. Uh, in the book of Psalm 38 and 15, uh, David cried, For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Uh, even David needed hope. Uh, he was persecuted by King Saul. Uh, he had to flee for his life, and he even had to hide in a cave to escape death. Uh, but even David never lost that hope. Uh, we see in the book of Job, chapter 6, Verse 1, uh, Job prayed, what is my strength uh, that I should hope? Uh, Job lost his family. Uh, he lost all of his possessions. He lost the ability to earn a livelihood. Uh, and he lost his health. Uh, but he never lost that hope. Uh, he never lost this hope that, that, that came. He didn't never think that his hope came from his own strength. Uh, he never lost that hope. Yeah. Uh, hope is what kept the remnant of Israel trusting in God. Yeah. During their times of exile, uh, they were separated from their homeland. Mm -hmm. uh, they found it hard to sing the songs of Zion in a strange land. Yeah. Uh, but they kept on believing and they never lost hope of returning to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, this world is full of pain and bitterness. Everywhere you turn, there is disappointment. Yeah. Uh, almost every TV headline uh, reveals a tide of distrust, yeah. Yeah. Uh, discord, and disharmony. Yeah. And it's sweeping not just our country, uh, but the world. Yeah. But my brothers and my sisters, yeah. in a world of uncertainty, mm -hmm. can we as Christians dare to believe? Uh, can we dare to believe that the children of God can make a difference in this environment? I stop by to let you know uh, that hope is our lifeline during this pandemic. Uh, hope is our lifetime in the storm. And because we have this hope, uh, in battle, Christ is our defense. Uh, in loneliness, Christ is our friend. In trials, Christ is our patience. Yeah. And in trouble, Christ is our reliance. Yeah. Uh, brothers and sisters, God knows every responsibility yeah. that you're showing. Yeah. Uh, he knows every sacrifice that you're making. Yeah. Uh, he knows every hardship that you're suffering. Yeah. Uh, he knows every storm that we are enduring. Yeah. Every burden that we're bearing. Yeah. Every tear that we're shedding. Yeah. But we see here in our text, yeah. Jeremiah served as a model for how to make a sober, realistic appraisal of human need. Yeah. As he witnessed the devastation left in the aftermath of Jerusalem's fall, yeah. he reflected on the darkness and despair that covered the city. Mm -hmm. uh, but even though he saw the harsh reality with his own eyes, yeah. 
Yes. He turned those same eyes toward God. Yes. Uh, because he recognized that God was the only hope yes. remaining yes. for his people. Yes. Uh, Jeremiah had hope in God's mercy. Uh -huh. uh, he had hope in God's compassion. Yes. Uh, he had hope in God's faithfulness. Right. And he had hope in God's goodness. Yes. Uh, but like Jeremiah, Christians have a message of hope yes. to offer to this world. Yes. Our ultimate hope is not in the politicians. No, no, no. CNN, no. MSNBC, no. or even Dr. Fauci. Yes. However knowledgeable they may be. Yes. But brothers and sisters, our hope. Yes. Our hope must be yes. in Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh, we, may, we may not have all the answers right. to today's problems of this world, yes. uh, but we have the Lord and he has all the answers. He's the light of the world, and, and we are called to bring his light into this dark world. Uh, 1 John 1 and 5 says, I love this verse, uh, it says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Uh, brothers and sisters, God could have used many other ways to announce his message of hope to this world, but instead he chose everyday people. Uh, like you and I to yeah. carry his message. Yeah. Uh, we must let the world know that there is hope beyond the uncertainty. Right. Uh, there is hope beyond the problems and frustrations yeah. of the here and now. Yeah. And that hope is only found in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, yes, it can be tough to hold on yeah. to hope sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but we must remember that hope is audacious. Yeah. Uh, hope is courageous. Yeah. Hope is brave and hope is bold. Yeah. Uh, hope persists no matter how things look. Yeah. Uh, hope thrives on the faith that although things don't look too good, right. uh, things will get better. Yeah. Uh, hope thrives on the knowledge that the Lord will never leave us right. or forsake us. Yeah. Uh, there is a story uh, that was told some years ago. Uh, several congressmen, they, they, they were devout Christians, and they were taking a walk one evening. And their conversation drifted to the subject of religion and the state of the world. Uh, they were very enthusiastic about the other. Uh, and, and just when they were about to agree that, that the world was heading for disaster, uh, they happened to walk past this little church. And from inside the church, uh, they can hear uh, the words of a familiar hymn. Uh, it said, there's a fountain filled with blood, uh, drawn from Emmanuel's bed, and sinners plunged beneath that blood, uh, lose all their guilty state. Uh, one of the congressmen faced lit up. Uh, he said, as long as people get together and sing that song, uh, there is always hope yeah. for the world. Yeah. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, yeah. hope will keep us afloat yeah. even if there is no cure for the coronavirus. Yeah. Hope will keep us afloat even if there is no guidance from the highest office in the land. Yeah. Uh, hope will keep us afloat even if our grocery bills are through the roof. Uh, hope will keep us afloat even if yeah. floods and tornadoes devastate our city. Yeah. Hope will keep us afloat even when the dark